Welcome back. Food insecurity is set to be on the rise in Nigeria, particularly in recent times with the advent of COVID-19. This, however, presents both a challenge and an opportunity for smallholder farmers and those seeking to invest in them, with the UN's Food and Agriculture Organization predicting that the agricultural market in sub-Saharan Africa will grow from $200 billion in 2015 to $1 trillion by 2030. And the FAO has said that about 7 million Nigerians will experience food shortage between June and August 2020 as 16 northern states and the federal capital territory have been identified to face food and nutrition crisis. The FAO has reported that states like Borono, Adamawa, Yobe, Benue, Gombe, Taraba, Katsina, Kano and all would be affected. But how bad is this situation? And being joined by the Ford Agriculture Representative in Nigeria, Al Hassan Sisi. Good morning and thank you for joining us on Business Morning. Now, the FAO lately has warned of food insecurity, not just in Africa, but Nigeria in particular. What has necessitated this warning? Is it all about COVID-19? Good morning. Yes, um, FAO is, uh, has been working with the government of Nigeria to identify the number of food insecure uh, households in the country with the goal to provide critical food uh, and livelihood support. The identification of the food insecure household has been done through the cadre harmonide, which is a consensual framework for the analysis of accurate food and nutrition insecurity in West Africa and the Sahel, including Nigeria. The Kadra Harmonide uh, has been uh, carried out in last March, and the results show that more than 5 million people have been uh, were food insecure and require urgent attention in the period of March to May 2020. Those people were, as I say, located in 16 states, including the federal capital territory, Abuja. So during the projected period of June to August 2020, the card harmony indicate that the figure are expected to increase to 7 million people in those 16 states unless resilience, driver intervention, and humanitarian assistance is intensified in the affected area. Of this vulnerable population needing assist urgent assistance, inaccessible population cost 314,000 and 378,000 for the current and projected period respected. Now, with the COVID-19, FAO is concerned about the pandemic impact on those vulnerable communities already grappling with hunger and all the crises, as well as countries that are uh, that rely heavily on food import and uh, all those countries who depend primarily on export like oil. The, Nigeria is among those countries. And we know that with the COVID-19, both life and livelihood are at risk from the pandemic. And if we don't take urgent murders, to support those who are already vulnerable before the COVID, we risk a looming food crisis unless murders, I mean, as I say, are, are taken to protect their livelihoods. Um, but I have to say what is good, the good news is there is no panic uh, it, at global level, I mean, um, uh, unlike the 2017, 2008, uh, 2007, 2008, a food crisis because they are enough food uh, for everyone in the world. So this is why we have warned 
about the looming food crisis, not only in, in, in Nigeria, but in, 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 in Africa. But we see that we have noted that all the African government have taken necessary measures to deal with the impact on agriculture and food security. Now, yes, you've talked about some good news, but let's talk about the numbers you actually reeled out from 5 million to about 7 million people. How much of an assistance will actually be enough? Or, or how much of an assistance should be rendered to these communities? Because these figures are quite huge. Yes, um, um, FAO uh, has uh, a great role to play in preventing and managing food crisis, whatever it is. And you are right, these, um, the locals that are invited to Eastern Africa, and um, we are following that in, Eastern, in West Africa, even if it is relatively calm for, for now, Recent FAO forecasts have indicated a risk of locust invasion from the Horn of Africa from June 2020. And there is a risk that some swarm could reach the eastern part of the Sahel in eastern uh, Chad from spring uh, breeding area uh, in, uh, in uh, Arabia also and East, in East Africa. Um, if the desert locusts arrive in Sudan before the summer rain, the swarm are likely to continue westward across the Sahel from Chad to Mauritania. But as far as Nigeria is concerned, we have two scenarios. The first scenario concerns only Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, and the Niger. It's a situation where the where the uh, the, the, the the swarm starts from six of June uh, six of, of June. We have a second scenario. In the second scenario, uh, Cameroon, the Gambia, and Nigeria are included, and it will be um, uh, in the north of. North of, north of Nigeria in, in the bay, as, as, as you say. In this case, the swarm can start in 24 uh, of, of June. But what we are doing now is we are doing a close monitoring of the situation. And FAO encourages that no regret investment in preparedness and participatory, anticipatory action to control swarm and safeguard livelihood given already high level of active food and security. And therefore, cost estimate for preparedness, anticipatory action, and rapid assessment has been already, uh, and rapid response has been already assessed. And we are ready uh, to deal with the risk of the, of the locust. We are working with uh, um, our counterpart, our partner, in the region and at global level. The FAO also says it requires about 50 to 75 million US dollars for control, surveillance, and livelihood support by December 2020. How do you hope to raise these funds? Yes, because with the treat of the locusts, we need rapid mobilization for the control, the surveillance, and the livelihood support to those who might be affected. To do what? We have to curb the speed of the desert locusts. As I say, control, ground and aerial control, assess the impact and monitor envi environ environment, environmental health and safety standards. We have to safeguard livelihood, as I say, and promote early recovery, providing farming re-engagement package a recent uh, FAO technical uh, not project, project loss of millet and grain production to up to 10, 10 million ton in the event of a locust attack in West Africa. And as I say, the scenario, the scenario one that concerns six countries, we have for the scenario one that concerns six countries, which is expected to control 300,000 hectares. And for the scenario two, which include the sixth first country, 
and Cameroon, the Gambia, and Nigeria, we have to control 500,000 hectares. And we have also to coordinate and to do the preparedness, deploy rapid surge support, facilitate regional partnership and collaboration, enhance regional advocacy, uh, strengthen regional uh, and national capacity. Uh, all this is required funding. And we estimate only for West Africa, this is for West Africa, that for the scenario one, it is it requires 50 million, and the scenario two, it requires 75 million. So we have the appeal, and we how we will fund it, we'll use the available fund, which is not enough, but we are calling also for partners, including government, to support the, uh, the, the plan. So it is a call that we have launched, an appeal that we have launched for the funding of this, uh, this, 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 um, this plan. But I have to say also, uh, while we are doing that, we are anticipating the impact. To ensure maximum impact in a rapidly evolving situation, FAO is advocating that resource partners contribute to the low cost, low cost window of the special fund for emergency and rehabilitation activity. This mechanism provides FAO with the financial means to react quickly to crisis, reducing the time between funding decision and action on the ground. But well, tell us, Mr. Sisi, the FAO has an office here in Nigeria where you are now. Tell us how the organization is working with the federal government of Nigeria to avert the food crisis. Okay. First of all, our approach with the government uh, is uh, through the, the country framework programming that has signed uh, by the government and the, the FAO. It is what gives FAO the right to intervene in the country. We are here in the country since uh, uh, 1977, and before that we had some uh, short-term activity. So our collaboration of the government is key, and it's uh, something that we have to do for any action that we implement to carry out in the country. So for this time being, we have the COVID-19, as you say, we are collaborating with the government. Nowadays, what we are doing is with the Federal Ministry uh, of Agriculture and Rural Development, we are doing an impact assessment of the COVID to uh, inform decision making in terms of uh, implementation of the response plan, but in terms also of uh, strategy and policy design. This one we are doing it with the wrong base agency, WFP and IFAD. And we will be we are also working at state level with the different government where we are um, to support the live the live the li uh, to support the livelihoods, agriculture based livelihood. For the locust one, we have already informed in uh, April um, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. We have been in touch with the Bornum Commissioner of Agriculture, and uh, so we will be also continuing this um, uh, this uh, partnership with all uh, government uh, entities that are relevant to address any looming food crisis, including the impact of the COVID-19 on food security and nutrition and agriculture, as well as the threat of the locust in the, in West Africa. So this is the approach we have here in, in all countries, and I think that we are in good way uh, in our mandate uh, of, uh, uh, in our mandate of the country. Now, having said all that now, what would you say is a major impediment to the growth of food and agriculture in Nigeria? Um, yes, we have the particular situation of the Northeast that is hit by a conflict for more for a decade now, and uh, we are providing our support to those who are affected through agriculture uh, uh, livelihood package. But I want to say that protracted conflict like that, insurgency, farm herd conflict, rural boundary, have led to 
rising uh, level of uh, food insecurity and malnutrition. And uh, uh, about 13.4% uh, of Nigerians are undernourished, according to the state of uh, 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 state of food insecurity that he released in 2020. And we have also weakness uh, linked to support the food safety and warning system, disaster risk and emergency management, uh, including strategy for proactive recovery. But we have also the treat to climate change, which is impacting our agriculture yield. Uh, at the same time, current food system, uh, current food system uh, treating the health and people and, and the planet. And agriculture alone accounts for 70% of water use and generate 25% of greenhouse emissions. We have the food system also that has need to, to be improved. I know that Nigeria is doing well, but food chain crisis and disruption caused by pandemic placed in pathogen, uh, desert, uh, uh, locusts, COVID-19, poor army one, uh, avia, avian swine, flu, uh, foot and move disease, all these things, and even total absolute, all these things are concerned that FAO is uh, working in, on with the government. So uh, uh, recently we have, when we have, when we see some, some pandemic, um, uh, pandemic pest and pathogen, we immediately in, inform the government and we work closely for them to deal with that. But there are no efforts are being done, but more need to be done to make sure that the agriculture benefit from the resource they have. We have resources in our area, and we need just to make it up the, for the profit of the million of people who rely on, the, on this sector. All right, Mr. Sisi, we need to wrap up this conversation pretty soon. But the National Bureau of Statistics just released the first quarter GDP and agriculture contributed 20.88%. Uh, from your assessments, could this sector have performed better than it has done? Uh, can you repeat the question again? The GDP numbers released this morning for the first quarter of uh, 2020, that's from the National Bureau of Statistics, shows that the agriculture sector contributed 20.88% to the GDP. Do you think that the sector could actually perform better than this from your assessment? Yes, I, 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 it, it is. Um, in, in 2014, it was 17%, according to to the statistics, so it's, it's, it's growing. And for that, what we have to, do, to say is we know that the government is strong uh, effort of the government to support the country, especially in rice production. We have many murders that have been taken in place. And as I say, Nigeria has the potential. Nigeria has the potential. And I think with the continued effort that have been put in the sector, we can see more or more benefit, not only for the country or the economy of the country in general, the macroeconomy, but also for the household that are heavily rely on agriculture. When I say agriculture, it's not just crop production, which it includes fisheries, it includes livestock, it includes uh, all the food system coming from production to the consumption. Uh, yes. Oh. Quickly, in one minute, just before you go, what would, are your views on Nigeria's efforts to achieve independence in rice production? You have one minute to answer that, please. Um, as I say, uh, I feel we have noted the government's strong effort to support the country in rice production. This includes efforts to re revitalize extension services delivery system, the establishment, for instance, of the presidential fertilizer initiative, is something that we need to welcome and, and we appreciate it. It helps ensure from our timely access to affordable, good quality fertilizer. We have also seen that the government has signed uh, into law a national seed bill that ensure that need companies uh, make good quality seed available to rice farmers. Because you know that um, the complaint of farmers across Africa is access to seed 
to quality and quantity. See, I think this is something. Uh, this is something that uh, uh, should. Be, this is something that should be appreciated, and it is in line with ECOWAS Rice Initiative that aim to boost. You know the the rice production uh, figures show. All right, uh, food and agriculture representative in Nigeria, Mr. Hassan Sisi, would have to wrap up the conversation at this point. Thank you for sharing your time with us.